It wasn't flight behavior, was it? It would be ridiculous. I didn't invite my mother. She wanted a nice round of cards. Tough. You should be taking me to America with you. You shouldn't leave me. You're being unreasonable. The university wouldn't stand for it. It's not like living in London, you know, Anne. No. I don't suppose it is. I'll send for you very soon. Won't be long. Not now, dear. I'm busy. are you doing? I'm leaving. I thought you might stay and see Pamela. I know when I'm not wanted. I bought you some flowers. I can't understand you. You said you wanted to meet Gerald. Roses are a waste of money. You hardly spoke to him. Of course. He thought it was odd. Oh, did he? Well, I didn't think his behaviour was exactly normal, Miss. He said your dress was nice. Gallivanting off the moment I arrive. It's not cheap coming up on the train these days. I didn't spend good money to sit on my own all evening. I told you to come up earlier in the week. It wasn't convenient. You knew I was going out. I had thought we might stay in and have a nice round of cards. It wasn't my fault. I had to go out to dinner with his friends. 
It's a kind of farewell party. I never got any dinner. While you were out enjoying yourself. I didn't enjoy I, it. I didn't know anyone. I was sitting in the window like patients on a monument. You haven't a thought in your head for anyone but yourself. Running all over London with that person carrying on half the night. It was you that told me to get engaged to that person. He's going to be your son-in-law. Never. Not after last night. You and him. The noises. The grunting. It's disgusting. It's absolutely animal behavior. You didn't attempt to disguise what you were up to with that Joel. It's not unusual to enjoy making love to one's fiancé. We're not living in the Middle Ages. Everyone does it now. <laughs> if only such a thing as self-control. I do have self-control. I do! What do you think it was like for us with you calling out all the time? You're nothing but a prostitute. I don't take money for it. I wish you wouldn't look like that. You're supposed to smile. Don't touch oh, me. Oh, Mummy, the door was don't open. touch me. Do excuse me. Oh, uh, sorry for Bart again. I just wonder it's if... It's not what it seems. She, she doesn't mean... I rather wanted to ask a favour of you. It's Daisy's Harvest Festival at school. She's got a flute class afterwards, so you wouldn't have to bring her home. Now, hands up, all of you, whose daddies have given you your own little garden. Well, I'm sure that you, like me, were very grateful to your daddy and thanked him. At Harvest Festival, we thank our heavenly daddy God, for giving us gardens and fields and the earth and the sea and all the good things that grow in them. Now let's all close our eyes and say a little prayer. Heavenly Father, on this That's a nice bit of cloth, there's a darnical tweed. We give thee humble thanks for this thy special bounty. Thank Do you know that when the women weave it, their tears are meant to mingle with the yard? Health and love. Of course, it's just Make supposition, but I'd like to think, think it was true, wouldn't you? Please, I don't even know you. What? I'm praise. Him, I'm all in favor of that, man. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Is that your girl? Oh, no. The landlady. Mrs. Kershaw. She has to go to work. I'm on holiday for two weeks. I don't think it's right to work. Not if you've got children. We'll get a cup of coffee down the road. I really think I ought to go home. I don't feel awfully well. I think it's the flu. I should go home and have a honey and lemon. Gerald had a bit of a cold last week. Gerald's my fiancé. He's a great believer in honey and lemon for chills and such like. He's absolutely right. Graves are fine and private place, and none I think there embrace. My father's in favor of cremation. That's what he'd like. I'm a writer. 
when the time comes. A playwright. Are you? I am. I have a play in rehearsal right now. If it does well in the provinces, it'll go into the West End. How nice. I'm going to be on television tonight. What it means to be a writer. My fiance is a lecturer. Will you watch me? I don't have a television. Give me your address. I'll send you one. That man of yours, is he out of a job? Out of a job? Couldn't he afford to buy you a ring for your finger? He had to go to America. There wasn't time. If you were my woman, you'd have a ring for your finger. of downtown Manhattan. That's the face most frequently presented to the world by New York City. And... Faulty, not to say the uh, unique position you find yourself in is having a success on your hands. Why do you think that is? Well, I haven't any idea. It's intrigued everybody who's read it more than intrigued. Um, the strongest going theory is that the reason why everyone has leapt at it is that it's a return to American... I history. think it's a story about... Uh, a boy and a girl, a young man and a woman, living in a motel in the outskirts of Chicago. The difficulties of sustaining that life. It hasn't done anything. That's fine. It was a... I had to wait hours for a taxi. That you uh, decided to cut yourself off from it and set yourself against it. And in this process, have you come to England to reconstruct yourself? To reconstruct myself? Yes. Yeah. It was a hell of a queue. No. I had to wait 35 minutes. To be helpful, I guess I would say that these things are. You didn't approve of television. I think you inevitably take that all with you. It's just that I don't have any. A man gave it to me. Gave it to me. It is intriguing that coming out of such a powerful background, you seem so playwright. Disinclined to have anything to do with it. I'm very glad that I got out of there. William McCluskey, thank you very much. And we'll be back with a film about the Royal Shakespeare Company. He was on that. On television? Yes. 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 What sort of a man? I told you. A writer. He was waiting for me when I went into the church hall. He took me for a coffee. And we talked about his work. Church hall? And you were picked up in a church hall? Not picked up. It was him, was it? It was. Oh, it was. I wish somebody would give me a television set. I didn't say given it to me. Not given. It's hired. It's a very odd thing to do, you know. He must have got a funny impression of you. What was he doing in the church hall? It was a school service. Mrs. Gershaw was at work. I went in her place. But him, the writer, what was he doing there? He went for his children, of course. Lord. Don't cry. There. I'm sorry, Pamela. I must be due for the curse or I've got the flu or something. Anne. I'm late with my period. I've never met anyone like him before. Two months, in fact. He's got sort of... Sort of... It's... 
He looked different on the television. I don't remember his face. When he said goodbye to me on the hill, he ran around me in a circle. Ran? Yes, sort of, as if he was dribbling a ball. He's got spaces between his teeth. I think he has. You know, gaps. Spaces? Do you mean he's got teeth missing? <laughs> no wonder he dribbles. <laughs> <laughs> when he said goodbye to me, he kissed me on the side of my mouth. Just there. You know what's wrong with you, don't you? It's got nothing to do with flu or getting a period. What's wrong with me? You've fallen in love with your toothless wonder. Pamela's come to visit. She's my cousin. I know, you told me. I hope you have a nice time. Thank you. For you. I think. Isn't that beautiful? I just wanted to thank you for looking after the children. Pamela did that. Hang on. Yes, they did hey, mention Pamela. You won't see it on the telly, Pam. I'm not bothered about anything. You are. My wife. Didn't I tell you? I'm divorced from her.
Now, where do you lie down? In there. It's as good a place as any. Are you going anywhere? Well. She's out of her mind. I got it from Gus. It's special. Who's Gus? My buddy. We bought each other rings. I wanted you to have mine. It's been kind of you. We used to get into the wardrobe at home and sing songs. Sheila, my wife. She didn't like it. She thought we were messing up her dresses. I want a cup of coffee. She's sick. She ought to have a hot water bottle for her stomach. What's wrong with you? She's pregnant. She told you that. How awful. Poor thing. Was it George? I don't want to tell you. She's got this man in Clapham. She usually stays there. He's not answering the phone. So I've heard. A friend's promised me some pills. To bring me on. You better get a hold of those pills right away, Pamela. They may not do anything except make you feel sick to your stomach. But if they work and you start, you better come back and stay with us.
I'd ride into battle for you. I wish you didn't have to go out. I have to sit with my children when Sheila goes out to work. I read them stories. In the middle of the night. They're like me. They don't need much sleep. Says, don't you? It's an idyll, a pastoral episode. I don't want it to be an idyll. I want it to go on forever. It's in the nature of idylls to be episodic. It's not meant to last. It's a span of time spent under the blue skies of the nursery ceiling. You use lovely words. You're beautiful. Beautiful, too. Two years ago. She has a son that's grown up. Where 
Where is she? She's at home, of course. Why didn't you tell me about her before? In the... before. We were talking about the past. It had nothing to do with now. Sit up straight. I haven't harmed you. She harmed her. Edna. Will you let me do the worrying about Edna? It isn't your concern. I am her husband. She has a right to meet you. Find out what kind of a person you are. I care about Edna. Look at me. I'm not good like you. I'd run if I could. I'm afraid of what she might say to me. You've led a little bit of a fantasy life, I imagine. You've got to face things for what they really are. There's you and me. And there's my wife. There's no getting around that. That's the reality. We'll face it together. Well, this is very distressing, isn't it? William's not here. He had to go out. I know. William told me about you two days ago. Honestly, I didn't mean to hurt anybody. William would like to do what's best for all of us. I know what I want. I'd like to hear what you want. I don't want anything. I mean, I'm not in a position to say what I want. It's your husband. I don't know how much experience you've had of men. I'm engaged. My fiance is in America. So I've heard. I gather he doesn't count. Oh, he does. Have you told him about William? There hasn't been any time. William is a beautiful man. A good man. I know. I know he's good. We have a good marriage. We care for each other. I'm not too old to have a child. William would like one. You yourself are very young. You have many years ahead of you. Yes. I should like to keep my husband. Please forgive me, don't cry. I'll go away. To America, as soon as possible. You'll see. No, you can't. You misunderstand William. If you leave him at this stage, he'll follow you wherever you go. What am I to do? Let him live with you for a little while. Till his play comes on. It's for the best. You must. I would avoid inflicting pain if I could. But the truth must be told. I am deeply in love. I am deeply in love. That is the only thing. And that is the only thing that matters. It's not to believe it. It's far too emotional. It's meant to be. Turning the poor bastard down. Is 
You can put love if you want it. I don't see why I should get rid of Gerald if you're going back to Edna. Hmm. She says you're on loan. Don't be crazy. I'm never going back to Edna. You're my girl now. We'll grow old together by the fire. Nobody has fires anymore. We forgot to get any food. Loving you, who needs food? with you, mate. What are you, putty? Can't you see I'm on the main road here? What are you, blind? What's the matter? It's nothing serious. No, look what you've done to my passenger. Go. And you can see by the state of them, it's fucking serious. Get out of it, you bird. Sooner. You shouldn't have waited till the last minute. Get some blankets. for the end. Do you still feel sick? You must try and pull yourself together. We can't take you downstairs on a stretcher. This is casual, we'll see. Pamela? I'm a little tied up. William? Quick! Yeah. yeah. You have to go now. I brought her some clean nighties. That's my girl. Take any pearls, will you? Not you. Not ever.
tried ringing, but I couldn't get through. Is William in? He's had to go out to visit a relative of mine. It's the second night in succession. Dinner will be spoiled. I've been waiting. I need shriveling up. How very inconsiderate of him. Well, you're not to blame. Tell William I called. I know she came here to see you. Is that why you're upset? What did you tell lies for? It wasn't a lie. <laughs> Will you listen to me? You said, who needs food? But I never said I wasn't seeing my wife. I never said that. You didn't say what, wife? You don't seem to understand. It's the number of wives that causes the confusion. I thought you were going to read the children a story. You said you had to go home earlier because Sheila was working a different shift. She is. Edna's been making you dinner. I give her housekeeping money. She doesn't want to be deprived of cooking for me. Who am I to deny her that? But you can't be eating until four o'clock in the morning. No. It's not possible. I've never cared about anyone as much as I care about you. You'll just have to believe that. I do have compartments in my life, I can't deny that. But I've never loved anyone but like this before. It's all right. I do believe you. I'm thinking of taking you for a holiday in Spain. Come and listen to my play. You shouldn't do that. It's not right. What's not right? Lying on our bed with her. It's more comfortable, and I didn't think you'd mind. You're not dressed. Don't be so narrow-minded. I'm like a brother to her. Look at it.
Read some of it. I'd rather read alone. I want to take time to read it. play, isn't it? Yes. I'm sure it is. Have you ever been to Spain, Pamela? We could all use a little sun. I went to Barcelona about three years ago with Gus. It was great. It was magic. I think you're going to like it, Pamela. No! I'm just going to take a couple of shirts to Gus. Take care of yourself. I will. See you around. Yes. This. You know, he wants it moved. It's the one he used to sing you, with Gus. But he still doesn't like it. How's the pottery? Mm. Bloody awful. Don't be fooled by it. You sound so unhappy. I feel as if I'm in prison. I dream of being set free, but someone must be waiting for me when I come out. Please give him back. It's blackmail him. Don't pay any attention. I know it. Look at that splodge. I bet she put it under the tap to make it look tear-stained. I'm not a keeper. I am not her security blanket, you know. Come away from the window. I think about there. The damp of autumn leaves against the wood of boats. Women with pink bodies. Come away from the window. I think of all the times we pissed and wept together. I th Sorry. Did I have to come in there? I won't have it, do you hear? I won't abide it. My house, my window. I won't stand for it, do you hear? See what I mean? We know that you know the Chinese game, but the audience don't know it. They don't know it. So you're just really beginning to suspect it. Now, what I want you to do is really bring it out. So that we can watch it. Do you know what I mean? Of course, it's all right, my dear. Right, let's leave that now. Um, just let it congeal. Why? Right. Okay. Come on, hurry up, darling. I feel as if I'm locked up. Walled up, maybe. When I come out. Will there be anybody waiting there for me? You know I don't want to go, but I don't see what excuse I can make. I always go home for Christmas. My mother's a wonderful person, really. But she's had a disappointing life. You can tell her there's somebody you've met that you'd rather be with. I couldn't do that.
Ann, I have to go. Go where? I don't know, anywhere. I need to walk. Don't leave me. I'm not leaving you. I just need to get away from the play, don't you see that? I'll be back in the morning. Don't let me down. I'm sorry. Little boy, you go for your walk. I can't take it, Pamela. I don't understand him. He's gone walking in the dark. Where do you think he's gone? Where has he gone? Perhaps he's looking at graveyards. He likes graveyards, doesn't he? Say something. Please, say something. I can't. Change platform 16. It's the 1555. Tastings of these bomb service. Your presence on the kitchen table. Promise not to open it till Christmas Day. I promise. Holy service. You look nice. That's a nice bit of cloth. I love you. Hello, stranger. Oh. oh, my, we have been throwing our money about. Mrs. Glyn Denning died, you know, in her sleep. By all accounts, her daughter never even bothered to go to the hospital. Ethel Myers sister produced a baby with a withered arm, poor little creature. Mrs. Munro's under the doctor for hypersensitivity. Why? Nerves. She does all her own gardening. The baby. And she's organised a local panto. <laughs> Wait till you see Arnold Digby. He's a scream. <laughs> you should have filled the car up this morning when I told you. I knew we'd be late. I knew it. Started, darling.
It's from a friend of mine. It's all about campaigns and tactics. Mm, you must have money to burn. What did you get? A necklace. No stopping if it's all the same to you. She's in with a very social crowd at the moment. Sit up straight, Anne. What's up with you? I'm feeling a little queasy. I think I need some air. you so well. Why hasn't he mentioned wedding bells? He's married. I might have known it. You'll just be his fancy woman. When he's tired of you, he'll cast you aside like an old boot. William loves me. Love? You need more than love, my girl. He's going to ask his wife for a divorce. When? Soon. Rubbish. I don't understand you. Do you want me to be happy? Go to hell. Going, Daddy. Oh. Something cropped up. Sort of. Tell Mother I enjoyed it. It was nice. back early. You should have let me know. Someone in the bedroom. I thought it was you. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Kershaw. Is there anything wrong? The roof. There's a leak in the roof.
I don't like this place anymore. Did you have a good Christmas, Anne? Yes, thank you. Is your mother all right? You're back early. You're back sure, early. let me know. A woman like that is no problem. Perhaps she's looking at Gravy. Perhaps she's looking at When I come out, when I come out, will there be anybody, anybody? What's the matter? It's ruined with seawater. I'll buy you another. I'm not a fool, you know. No, you're not a fool. I'm going to have a baby. That's good, Anne. We can't stay here. I don't like this place anymore. Be here for the furniture. Somebody's got to let the man in when he comes to connect the gas. You said we'd never be parted. I want to think of you here. I want to think of you here getting fat. Come on in here. I've got a surprise for you. I don't want any more surprises. Push it.
Come on. like a room with a view of the sea. I'm Hel Helen and Vladimir Smith. When I knew you were coming, I couldn't wait. I went to crew in a car. I was looking for you on the train. I didn't want to be away from you for a moment longer. I didn't see you. I might have missed you. My play is trivial. You're the only one that counts. You're my flower, my baby maker. I've been so unhappy. They want my play in America. That is good. It doesn't matter. You're what matters. When you go to America, I don't want to... When we go to America. And the baby. The three of us. Listen, I have to stay here for another day. And then I'll come home on the midnight train. And we'll never be parted again. Never. <laughs> Jesus. We've really cracked it, haven't we? I love you. See you tonight. He wouldn't move. Why is his desk here? We live here. Well, he said it was only fair to find you a new place before he came home. He's not going home. It was never a permanent relationship. You knew that. It's jolly well got to be. I'm having a baby. You're young. Do you like the pram? I bought it at John Barnes. I don't understand any of you. I've just been up to see William in Liverpool. We were so happy. To Liverpool? But he said you wouldn't go. He said it was over. Well, it isn't. I did go. No, but Pamela's there. She went three days ago. After that, he was coming home to me. I, I only permitted it on those grounds. I don't believe any of it. Does he go to bed with you? I'm his wife. Why does he do it? He must be ill. All the things he said. All those words. When I got your letter, he told me not to take any notice. I felt awful, I really did. The bit about you feeling as if you were in prison. Yes. William thought that bit might get through to you. I never really wanted to write it. it seemed like blackmail. Not my style at all. But William dictated it. He said it was for the best. Of 
course, Sheila never understood him. She hasn't any depth. She saw him in a taxi some months ago with some girl. He said he was in Manchester that week and couldn't see the children. There was some sort of a collision. She hoped he'd broken his neck. She doesn't know he's a rare man. William, you must give some answers. Are you going to stay here living with Anne? Yes. You don't intend to come back home? No. Do you love me? Yes. Do you want a divorce, then? No. Please to know that I am being punished for it. The man I told you of has left me, and I am having a baby. I have been thrown aside like an old boot. You should have put her off. She doesn't sound as if she's going to be much comfort to you. My mother's not the sort to be put off. When she comes, will you have a word with her? What sort of a word? Well, you know, flatter her, tell her that she looks smart. Anything to take her mind off this. You look well. Is that all? What are you going to do? Get on with it. It's too late for anything else. Don't you worry. Do you know what a responsibility it is? I'm not thinking about it. It's not happening to me. Poor little soul. His wife ought to be told. She has been. She bought the pram in the hall. Oh, it's a beautiful pram. Very expensive. I keep shoving it out. But every night someone puts it back. Why didn't you take precautions? I meant to. I forgot. Shooting's too good for him. Putting a 
way. <laughs> Why didn't you let me in? I couldn't. I couldn't. Did that bum Gerald come back? I... Oh, wait! 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 Is Mommy... Is my mother come to stay? Let's go away. It's all spoiled here. I can't. My mother. I won't promise you anything. I won't say I'll do this and I'll do that. Let's just spend the day together. You've gotten so big. You're so full of my baby. I can meet you in about an hour. I say I've got to go to the clinic. I want you to promise me something. No matter what happens, no matter what I do, I want to be there when the baby comes. You're going to have to tell your mother I'll be there. My mother's going home tomorrow. Oh, well, then that's all right. Maybe they won't let you into the hospital. You're not my next of kin. Can't have it in a hospital. You've got to have it in our room where it all began. You understand? I don't think they let you have your first baby at home. In case of complications. Oh, come on. You're in great shape. Promise me. Bring Edna, and you tell her to give me a message as soon as it starts. You've got to have it in our room. I will, I will. Even if it kills me. What are you doing? I'm burying a lock of your hair. My hair? When we grow old, we'll come home here together and look for it. And I'll tell you, I love you then more than I love you now. Except I figure that's impossible. And we'll have all those years behind us. Like an album full of snapshots. And when we flick through the pages, We'll run and leap and fall to this place. The hair on our heads turned gray. Keep it going. My head's going to come this time. It's okay. Mm. 
Here it comes. It's coming now. Beautiful. The rest of the baby will come with the next contraction. Okay? I'm going to get starting now. Now, you can give a little push to start with, but pant when I tell you. Okay? Pant now. Keep it going. I love you. Not true! So, I'll never leave you. Lovely. Aren't you a clever girl? It's a bloody well gone.